thank you for doing this, Drake. I know that you're, you've been, you've been busy. Yeah, I've been, it's been quite a ride. How does it feel being thrust back in the, in the media like this? Um, it's, it's pretty overwhelming. Yeah. Did you, did you realize when you were, when you agreed to do quiet on set, like, did you fully think through everything? Like, okay, after this comes out, it's going to be, it's going to be a hit. No, I did not expect it to, uh, catch fire the way that it has at all. No. Really? what you thought maybe people don't care anymore maybe it's irrelevant like what 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 was your thought process Um, you know, I really didn't think much about that. I was just kind of working through a lot of stuff and felt that it was time to share my story. And um, that's really all I was kind of thinking about. I, I, I didn't really think about the uh, uh, public response very much. When can I ask you when this was filmed? When did they reach out to you to do this? Yeah, they reached out to me um, maybe like early last year. Um, and I really was not in a place that I was prepared or ready to um, agree or accept to do it. And um, so I, I pushed them off for quite some time. Um, and... Uh, I just really wasn't in a place where I was ready to do anything like this. Um, I was going through a lot of stuff emotionally, uh, stuff with family, and and I ended up um, checking into rehab. And when I came out, I felt like I'd gone through so much trauma therapy, so much group and one-on-one -on -one and so much stuff. And, uh, had been kind of like working through a lot of stuff in there. And I don't know, I just kind of felt more comfortable with the idea. So did you circle back to them and you're like, wait, I, I feel like I might actually want to do this. Yeah. I continued the conversation and, and uh, they were making me feel more comfortable and um, yeah. Did they just... even know, how did they know about this because I mean you've kept it secret for so many years we're all finding out about it now so how did they know or they just wanted you on as a former child star to talk about other stuff yeah I think they had an idea because I mean rumors have been circulating for quite some time and um and I I'd, I'd taken a meeting with them before I went to rehab and kind of told them my whole story and what had gone on and what had happened. And that was the first time I'd really like shared this with kind of strangers. Um, and, and so it kind of just went from there. I see. And how are you feeling now? I know it's overwhelming. You're in the thick of it. You can't really be looking back, but do you have any regrets about sharing your story on, on the show? Um, no, I mean, I, I, it, it's been a really freeing experience and, um, you know, I, like, like I said, I'm, it's very overwhelming and it's an emotional roller coaster, but I'm able to start processing and dealing with things that I've kept inside for so many years. For so many years. And you really did keep it, keep it a secret. I mean, it's wild for people that watch Quiet on set, people that didn't. You really, this whole thing with Brian Peck happened before the show aired. So it's like, before was it before you started filming Drake and Josh? Yeah, it was during the Amanda show. It was during the Amanda show. So when you become this huge star on Drake and Josh, it's like you are hiding this huge secret you're this star you're this babe for all these young girls going crazy it's like a wild timeline yeah i was going through a lot uh while filming drake and josh um 
I, it was, there were some really difficult times. But somehow you went to set, you did the job, you were good at it. You were funny. Like, how do you explain that? How do you explain? Did you, do you think you totally. I think that was just my, my escape was mm. when the lights came up and I was getting to do what I love to do. And, um, it just, that was, you know, kind of everything just, I was able to kind of push everything deep down inside, but, uh, but yeah, it was, it was really, really tough at times. Was it only years later that obviously like as the, the public mostly knows, like you did have to escape to, you know, substance abuse and alcohol and stuff like that because of what you went through. But throughout those early years of like filming Drake and Josh, did you have any escapism? Were you doing anything or to help you process it or to help you? I really, I really, it, it was really hard. I mean, I didn't, it was so hard to talk about. So, I mean, the thought of going to therapy and to, I just, I, I didn't have any tools. I didn't know what to do. So I was just kind of lost and trying to figure out how to work through this on my own. And yeah, it was. But you knew it was, you knew like you were old enough and, 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 you know, there enough to know that what he did was wrong and that it was like fucked up and this is like a horrible thing you just didn't want to tell anybody about it and you know didn't know where to go exactly i mean i didn't know how to process it or work through it or deal with it and and yeah i mean i i was just completely lost did you feel anger I felt everything. I felt sadness, shame, anger. Uh, it was a mix of everything. But you managed to still lead this kind of double life. Like here you have this huge secret that you're dealing with that's like unfathomable. On the other hand, you're becoming this huge star. You're going to set every day. You're like, a, you're famous. You end up getting a girlfriend and she doesn't know about it. It's wild the story that you tell that your mom that her mom was the one that kind of put the pieces together. Is it did, did that shock you that like nobody else in your life did that but your girlfriend's mom? Did? Yeah, I mean my dad, my dad was right, your dad uh concerned um but uh but no, she was she I mean she played a huge huge role in getting me out of the danger. Wow. Was, yeah. She really did. And going back to your dad, first of all, he's a, he's so beloved right now in America. Everybody loves him, dies for him, feels for him. We really saw his range of emotions as he was interviewed on quite on set. Um, and he really did have a suspicion, have a bad feeling. Um, you didn't want to listen to it at the time. I'm sure he's, it looks like he's still broken over it. And it's probably a whole processing for him too, to try to, to have that feeling that he had some sort of a feeling, but wasn't able to, to pull you away. Yeah. I mean, he, and that's the thing I, I, I you know, I think that he takes a lot of uh, responsibility and feels like, you know, what happened is, his fault and he didn't do enough but at that time and the way that how calculated brian was at what he was doing it, it just i mean it just i you know that you can't lay any blame on on him or anybody but but you know who was responsible for it how is he today your dad are you are you in having a good relationship yeah, me and my dad have a great relationship. I mean, we talk every day and he's going through a lot. Um, but I think that it's kind of, it was cathartic and helpful for him to finally be able to get it. Same thing, get something off his chest that's been there for so long. It was weird to hear somebody that, you know, we have preconceived notions of momagers. And I mean, I guess we don't have a preconceived notion of a dadager. But your dad definitely doesn't come to mind of someone that's like, 
into showbiz, you know, taking his kid to auditions. So it was surprising to hear that he was really the one that started this whole process with you, that you were interested in, you were very show many. And he was like, yeah, this is something fun that we could do together. And he really wanted to be part of it and be your manager. Well, I think that just kind of evolved into that role. Um, you know, he was uh, going to a counsel. He was at a counseling session for uh, his divorce with my mom. And he was looking through a magazine in the waiting room and saw some advertisement like, hey, does your kid want to act? And he's like, well, I tried Little League with my son and, you know, different things. But I think that this is something that he'd be interested in, something that we could do together. And uh, so it kind of just grew grew from there. But he got sucked into it. Like, it seemed like he saw you thriving and wanted to really, like, be part of it with his son. So looking well, back, something like... we were able to do together and able to spend time together and travel together. And um, so I think that that's really what what he was thriving on, you know, was getting to um, spend this time with his son and and uh, be able to watch him grow and do something he loved. And, and um, yeah, I think that's really what was his motivation. So when you pushed him kind of out and didn't want him involved anymore in the documentary, we learned that it's mostly Brian's kind of manipulation. Is that, is that right? Yeah. I mean, Brian was telling me he was stealing my money and I should have all this money. And uh, you hear stories about that in Hollywood so much that it's very easy to believe. And I was, I had no idea about taxes and agency and manager uh, commissions and, and, you know, we weren't being paid very much money to work on Nickelodeon. And, um, but when you get it put into your brain at such a young age that, you know, you should have all this money and the reason you don't is because of your dad. And I think that Brian saw that my dad was really the one that was going to, you know, get Brian out of the picture. So he worked really diligently to put it into my brain that, you know, parents shouldn't be their kids' managers. Um, and. So when he succeeded at doing that, was, did Brian take over that role? Like, was he trying to manage you? Well, not so much manage me, but be the liaison for everything. You know, you need, I'm, I should be the one that introduces you to the right agents and the, mm. the people, the industry. And I, ha I'm, I'm so connected. And, and so it kind of just snowballed into, into that. And, you know, Dan Schneider, we saw his response to, to the show. You didn't speak, um, negatively about him it seemed like your experience with him seemed to be a good one on the show on, a, on the amanda show yeah i mean i can only speak to my experience and uh you know he was one of the few people that was really there for me during this time and um so that's that's really all i can speak to did he reach out to you after seeing it and thank you for 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 what you said about him, that you were speaking kindly of him, unlike everyone no, else. No, I've no, I've kind of just uh, no, I we're I've been it's it's been a difficult time, and so I've just kind of like been going through this like by myself, like, and yeah, you know. So you're not really talking to anybody else that's that was around that time. People are wondering about Amanda. Well, I mean, some cast members have reached out and I, you yeah. know, people I've been friends with for many years. We've, we've talked and, and things, but, uh, but yeah, no, it's just been a, it's been a strange kind of dreamlike state, really. I can imagine. Yeah. I can imagine. And like, also it was, it was many years ago and reliving all of that and looking at it differently because you also even said like, I know that now it looks like, don't put your kids in this industry. It's awful. It's disgusting. You know, all these things, but you're not completely saying that you're not saying this is a disgusting industry. It sounds like you're saying, you know, bad people do bad things. Well, it's difficult because I, I have so many amazing memories and I, I got to do so many incredible things 
Um, but you know, and what I want to take, take that away from my experiences just because of what I've been through. I mean, it's a hard question to answer. Um, and with the letters that have come out, it shows that there's really a deeper, it's like an onion. I, I, I always thought that, you know, there's bad actors and watch out, you know, keep an eye out. Um, but I didn't realize that there was so much support and protection and things that were happening, uh, around it. Well, that's a, that's a question I want to talk to you about. Cause um, you said the letters, there were letters of support for Brian Peck, like hun hundreds or 140 or something by a lot of beloved actors that we know, one of them being James Marsden, boys, boy meets world cast. Do you think there's like a black and white here? Like they shouldn't have writ written letters of support if they had you know, any idea or inclination as to what I went through? Or is there a world where you say he fooled them? They didn't know he was a bad guy. I don't blame them for writing those letters. Yeah, I think I think it's both. I think that there's, you know, I think that a lot of people were fooled. I think that 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 Brian was able to pull the wool over a lot of people's eyes and paint a picture that was a far cry from the reality. And, um, you know, I, I, I can't speak to what was going through anyone's mind at the time or now or how they're processing it or anything like that. But, uh, yeah, I think that, uh, Brian was able to fool a lot of people. Yeah. Well, a lot of people equated this because Danny Masterson, the actor from that 70s show, you know, he was convicted of, of rape and Mila, uh, Kunis and Ashton Kutcher wrote letters um, in support of him. And, you know, they got a lot of a lot of heat for it. And there were some people that said, hey, they're his friends and basically family and they they believe in him and they want to help him lesser his sentence. So it's 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 really this was also many years ago. So the kids were actually kids at that point. Right. Like the boy boys world cast. But um, do you have any anger towards those people that wrote those letters in support? Cause I mean, the conviction he did end up getting was so the sentence, I'm sorry, was so like, it was nothing. What 16 months that must have been so disappointing. Yeah. I mean, at the time I was just happy. I was well, not happy, but I was just relieved for it to just be all over, you know? And I was, um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really harbor a lot of anger. Um, it's more of a, uh, um, I think, just confusion and, and working through it. But like I said, I mean, he was very good at fooling people, and and mm. people process things differently. And I don't, yeah, I mean, it would, I think it would just add too much to what I'm, I've been through or what I'm going through too uh harbored anger and a lot of people looked immediately to 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 josh peck your co-star like why aren't you saying anything why aren't you speaking out again this is people also knowing that you kept this a secret people knowing that this happened before you were filming um with josh what did you think of that did you feel like well, josh worked on the amanda show and so he he saw and knew uh, what was going on. Um, but, you know, I appreciate that he reached out to me privately and, and, you know, didn't go straight to the media because, you know, he, he's, he was there with me and, and saw what I was going through. And so. What do you I mean by he saw and knew what was going on? Like he knew specifics? Well, I don't think he knew specifics, but, but there were people who, you know, worked on the show that, that knew, uh, you know, who it was and things like that. And so I think that when, um, he just knew how sensitive this was for me. And after, of course, watching the documentary, um, he learned of so much that I had gone through that, uh, I think that he was just so sensitive and made sure to reach out to me privately rather than just going straight to social media or yeah. something. 
you know. But but you're saying people, so you're basically saying there were people around that had an idea that you were the the kid in question that yeah, after 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 the fact. I mean, there were just like I, you know, say in the documentary in the courtroom was full for Brian. So I mean, and Hollywood's so small, so there's a lot of you know talk yeah. and things like that so um and there were people that i confided in that i worked with um so it was definitely known that i was you know going through a lot oh wow okay so you're saying it didn't get out to the public public but people kind of yeah. knew so how do you explain this guy getting hired at disney after I he gets it out I, I, I cannot explain that i don't know i think it's just you know, like you see in the letters of support, I mean, there's people who said that they would love to work with him again, that they would hire him again. Um, and I think it was just that he was so well connected that I, I, that's unexplainable. Well, how does that make you, did it make you feel like people weren't believing you? Did it make you feel like you were doubting yourself? Like, I can't imagine how painful that is. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't know how to think of it. I just was in total shock that he was able to go and work at other networks and continue just the way it was before for him. It was, I, I mean, shock is really the only thing I can explain as. Yeah. You, yeah. you say in the documentary and by the way, you spoke so, you know, eloquently about everything that happened and you even said like, I'm not going to say exactly what he did. I'm going to say, take the worst case scenario of, you know, sexual abuse. And then we do get a snippet when we see the court filings um, for those who watch the show. And it is the worst thing you could ever, you could ever imagine. And I don't know the court system that well, but six, like, it sounds like the life to me. Like, it sounds like you do that to a fucking kid and you do that to anybody. Like that's, rape that's abuse that's it's just wild like the the sentencing like i mean it was shocking and and walking into the courtroom and seeing all the people on his side of the courtroom and the support and it was it was a lot it was really re-traumatizing and I just, but you went you decided to to go how did you yeah. make that decision did, did you have any Second thoughts about that? Like, maybe I don't want to go. I don't want to see him. I don't want him to see me. Definitely. Definitely. Um, I mean, a lot of that time, you know, I have to be honest, is a blur and a lot of things are coming back. Um, now that I'm reprocessing, it's, I don't know, reprocessing and uh, going through it all again. Um, but I think at that time I was in such a, state of euphoria i mean it was just i was just trying to keep myself upright and get through what was going on um but uh yeah i really don't know what my thought process was at that time about going or anything there was uh your dad didn't come i i thought that was interesting was there a reason well i i my dad and I hadn't been speaking for a while and, and I just knew how emotional he was. And, um, I was just, I didn't want to break his heart. I didn't want to, it was, it was really difficult for me to finally like explain to my dad, you know, what happened and, uh, Did you so know it, you're a father now. Mm -hmm. like do you ever think about that like like just understanding the pain of a parent knowing their kid went through this like what you would do as a parent to somebody who did this to their child yeah I mean I that's a really it it's a real eye-opener having a son and and I'm just so thankful um, that his mom is so incredible and, you know, I, 
I'm, I just owe so much to her. And I mean, when we were married, we were going through so much pain and I, my mind was, I was just dealing with so much darkness and she did everything that she could to keep my, my life on track to keep me working to, uh, you know, I, I mean, honestly, I, I really owe everything really? to her. I, I, I don't know what I would do. Um, if I didn't have her and, and, you know, I, 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 I have to take responsibility for a lot of pain that I caused and, um, but she's such an incredible mom and she sacrificed so much in our relationship to keep my career going, um, to keep, the family stable to be an incredible mom. She went through so much and um, it is, it is, um, it does put into perspective how my, you know, everyone says, you know, like your parents always say, I'm, you'll, you'll understand when you have a child of your own kind of thing. And, and that is a, a huge eye opener. Um, but uh yeah i'm just so do you get indebted. to spend a lot of time with your son i do i do i i uh i i visit him a lot and um uh we have a we have you know he's incredible and we have a great relationship um and he really is the motivation to continue you know to keep going and and um yeah and we saw kind of that your your ex did move on. How does that make you feel? Are you also in a place of moving on from that relationship? Or do you have regrets there that it the marriage didn't end up working out? Oh, well, I mean, I definitely have regrets uh, for, you know, making the wrong choices and doing things I shouldn't have done. And, um, but hopefully working through all of this um, gets me to a place where uh, we're able to just be there for my son and and keep him at the forefront of our focus. And has she been supportive throughout this time? She's ex? been very supportive. She's been very supportive. Yeah, I mean, through everything, through everything, and I, you know, my mental state and things that I was going through. Uh, I don't know how, how she did it, but she's been a huge support through all of this. And, uh, even before, um, you know, cause she knew everything and, um, yeah, I mean, she did everything in her power to keep me going and, and it really, yeah, it really, um, I just, owe, I just owe so much to her. How did you keep the, you know, your family afloat? Were you working throughout, you know, we we know about the the time you went missing and you know, you spoke about rehab and you had you had rough years um mm -hmm. leading up to leading up to now. Were you were you working steadily at any point and Well, yeah, I mean, thankfully to Thankfully to my wife, I, she, she worked so hard at, she, she kind of, she basically fell into the role of managing everything for me and, and keeping me working and, uh, keeping everything going for us. Um, they were able to make a living. So I was able to, yeah, I was able to at least uh, scrape by because I mean, you're without saying her, in, you're saying in her, acting her. in acting roles or voice mostly roles? in music, mostly in, in music. music. I was music. I was able to tour and uh, put music out and and um, and stuff like that. So. Would you say that music is has become more of your passion over 
over the acting? Yeah, music's always been my passion. Mm -hmm. I, I, acting is, I've always loved acting, but I, I, you know, I'm a writer and I want to create and I want to, I don't know, there's just something a lot more freeing about putting a pen to paper and writing songs and producing and being able to create something from nothing and end up performing it on stage. And there's just, I just much more attracted to that than sitting on set and waiting to, to say your lines. Yeah, exactly. Um, I wanted to ask about uh, Amanda Bynes because you did the Amanda show with her. We know we've seen in the media that she was asked to do quiet on set and she didn't want to. I'm sure you see kind of what's been been happening with her. And she also, you know, was in a conservatorship. And I mean, we see the flashbacks from quiet on set and we're reminded what a star she was and the charisma that she had. And do you have any feelings about that? Like, do you, do you know anything of what could have happened with Amanda? Um, you know, no, I mean, I can, I can only speak to my experience while I was working with Amanda. And that was that she was, like you said, just uh, an incredible talent. She was so funny. She was so, uh, I mean, she was like a, a rocket ship. I mean, she yeah. got on set and she was just, the talent that just oozed from her effortlessly was awe-inspiring. And she was a big star to me because I had grown up watching all that. And so for me, it was uh, when I booked the Amanda show, it was, I was couldn't believe it and that I got to work with her and I was already such a big fan. And um, yeah, I don't, I can't speak to anything in her personal life. Uh, Did you ever see like, because people were saying that her and Dan were really close and it was a little weird for some people. Did you ever think that or notice that? No, I, uh, you know, I mean, this was in the throes of a lot that I was dealing with personally. Right. But no, I mean, I just saw a really talented, uh, amazing uh actress and uh yeah i just no i never saw anything that have you had uh, any contact with her in the last few years no 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 sliding into dms being like <laughs> what's up no no um i did want to have this space to talk a little bit about um your what happened with you after and the allegations against you that you ended up uh, that you ended up dealing with, because I think that we see you on quiet on set and everybody's heart is reaching out to you and everyone wants to give you a big hug um, and be there for you realizing what you had went through. And then we find out about this and it, I don't want it to take away from, from anything. So I wanted to give you like the space kind of to talk about what happened with, with you. Um, in 2021, you pleaded guilty to attempted endangering, um, uh, children, uh, to juve harmful to juveniles. So what, what happened with this woman? What can you tell us to clarify that? Um, so we can understand better. And of course, like you went through so much trauma, that I'm sure it had to do somehow with leading up to this kind of thing even happening. Yeah. I mean, I just, I, uh, was, I responded on, uh, some DMS and was incredibly irresponsible and, and, uh, got myself into conversations that I shouldn't have had. And I ended up finding out that, you know, I was, talking to someone I shouldn't have been talking to. And uh, it snowballed into this, these, these allegations that were not true. And um, it just turned into this big thing. And when I finally uh, was, in, I was being investigated and, and that was really difficult on my family. And uh, thankfully through 18 months of subpoenaing, 
my social media and phones and computers and uh, witnesses and 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 everything. It it uh, turned out that a lot of most of what was being accused of me wasn't true. Mm. And, but I did have uh, these conversations. And so I took responsibility for that and um, ended up pleading guilty uh, because I, you know, I mean, just financially, I was just devastated and I, uh, I just had a son and I didn't want to put my family through all of this anymore. And uh, so I ended up going through uh, the process the way that I did and, um, you know, very regretful and, you know, but I, I, I have to take, you know, there's just so much that I've, had to deal with and 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 through that, like I said, not having the tools or not knowing how to process things, you know, I I, I uh, made a lot of decisions in my life that I shouldn't have made and uh, hurt a lot of people. And um, but now, where I am at my in my life now, I'm I'm I think that I'm finally at a place where I can process and deal with this, and through therapy that I've been through and. Um, going actively going through and unearthing all of this thing and being things, all these things and being able to face them head on um, for really the first time in my life. Uh, you know, and like I said earlier, it's, it's an emotional roller coaster. So I've, it's just, it's, it's a lot to handle, but finally, I think taking the right steps to work through it instead of the way I had been in the past um, allows me to hopefully uh, do this in a healthy and safe way and uh, hopefully share my story with others and, and uh, maybe prevent people from making the same mistakes or uh, feeling confident to be able to speak their truth. And so that's, that's all I can say is I, I'm just, you know, it's a process and I'm, I'm working through it. So just to, to kind of make sure that we understand with, with the scent, with the, with the allegations, then the things that she said that you were grooming her since she was 12, all those things were not true. Yeah. What you were ended up, um, uh, the only thing you did, you responded to a DM, you weren't aware of how old she was. Yeah. And then I finally found out and then I cut communication and then things got, I, I think she got upset and mm. he was coming to concerts still. And, and I was doing everything I could to kind of keep my distance. And uh, then she made all these allegations that things had happened at a concert, but um, throughout the investigation, I mean, there were witnesses who were there the whole time who refuted it and, uh, people who uh, weren't even connected with me that were friends of hers and her families that were there the whole time. And mm. so, uh, so no, and, and a lot of the things that she said about message about sending inappropriate pictures and things like this, uh, mm -hmm. it was able to be investigated and show that, that none of that. That existed. didn't happen. No. So your yeah. only responsibility there was, you would say like, communicating, not knowing how old she was, not doing the due diligence of kind of knowing. Exactly. That's the best way to put it. Yeah. Wow. So don't you want to scream that from the rooftops though? Because I feel like not enough people really know that. That well, I mean, I've, I've put out statements on Instagram. I've, I've done interviews about it. Uh, the New York times just uh, did a retraction um, because they had actually printed that I'm uh, that I had to register as an SO and mm -hmm. uh, that I had pled guilty to SA and things like that. And which is not true. Not true. It, none of that was true. And it took two years, but they finally uh, just printed a retraction. And unfortunately the New York times prints it. Everyone picks that up, spreads that as the story. And that's what catches fire. Um, but it, you know, hopefully in this whole journey, in this process. Things will that, come to light. Yeah. 
what else are you hoping that will come out of this, this whole process of sharing your story, doing interviews, being so open? What are you hoping that comes out of this for you, for your future? Um, I hope just healing, just, you know, there's been a lot of pain and, uh, yeah, I just hope that moving forward, um, I, I, I guess I, I don't know. It's, it's hard to put into words cause there's so much, you know, that I'm processing and going through and I keep saying that, but it's, uh, yeah, I just hope that there's a uh, healing and, and, uh, way to move forward and, um, get through this in a healthy way. Yeah. What about that fifth episode? We were just teased with the fifth episode of quite unset. Was that not in the, in the, in the plans that that is this, did you shoot this recently? No, I don't know if it's going to be, I mean, there's a lot of parts of the interviews that weren't used. And mm. so I don't, I don't, I'm not exactly sure what um, is going to come out of that. I, mm. I, yeah, I don't know. Oh, you're not sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, we are waiting to see. That's for sure. Do you have any hopes that, you know, you can move forward, deal with the trauma, you know, be able to have healthy relationships. That's really important. Are you, is, is there any way you start fresh from here and, you know, doing more I mean, music? That's, that's, and that's my hope. I mean, I'm working on music. Uh, I'm touring, I'm finishing an album. Um, but, uh, you know, really the main focus for me is just my son, his mom, um, and, uh, correcting a lot of the mistakes that I've made and, and, uh, taking responsibility for decisions. And, um, yeah, I mean, the career is one thing, but I have, there's so much healing that needs to happen with my family and my relationships that that's, I have to keep, I have to keep that. You have to focus, focus on that. So you yeah. said that everything's good with your dad. The ex has been very supportive. What about your mom? My mom and I have a great relationship. I mean, you know, Brian was very good at tricking everyone. And so I can't harbor any resentment or, you know, sure. She could have made different decisions and, and things, but it's really, it's much easier to say that in hindsight when you have a bird's eye view, but when you're in the thick of all of this, it's. It sounded like your dad was feeling kind of like, not that he was blaming her, but it felt like he passed the baton to her. But he was kind of forced to in some way when he was shut out, but that he, it sounds like he has a little bit of resentment maybe towards your mom for, for not being on top of it. No, I mean, I don't think he has resentment towards her. I think that it's just such a heartbreaking experience and uh, that uh, I feel like my dad just feels like he should have, like he could have done more. But, mm. and, and that's what I mean in hindsight, everyone's wondering why couldn't I have done this or why shouldn't I have done this or I should have done this. And I mean, we can't really look back and, say I should have, I could have, I, mm. I, I think that it's just now processing what has happened yeah. and moving forward from that. Um, but no, I mean, I, I have a great relationship with both of my parents and my right. family. Uh, Are I you just, ready to, to start dating anytime soon? That's not, I mean, I have, in your lot, mind. I have a lot to work through just on my own and yeah. uh, personally. And, you know, I, You're no, I just have to, no, I have to just be there for my son and, and do whatever I can to 
work on myself right now. And your sobriety, because I know you struggled with that. So can you share where you're at with it right now? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's something that's always going to be there, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I think that um, rehab helped a lot and going through so much and learning that I think finding the helping find the cause of what, you know, makes you go t- down that path um, mm-hmm. is really eye opening. And but it's it's something that it's a day by day thing. I mean, it's a it's something that you have to work through. If you stop, think you've got it. That's when something. Have you had that before where you stopped, had some chips under your belt and, and relapsed? Yeah. I mean, I had seven years of sobriety. Oh, you Uh, did. Yeah. And relapsed hard. hard. That's what ended up going in, uh, when I ended up in rehab, um, before that I had had well, almost seven years, about six and a half years of not doing anything. Wow. And, and that's, what's really hard is you usually after something like that, when you do relapse, it's usually a lot quicker and a lot harder. Uh, but I did that you without, mean, re- you mean the slippery slope? is is quicker and harder. Well, no, the relapse is you you're you're going to end up doing more than you had done even prior to wow. and and the downfall is quicker and it's it's really hard. Um but I did that 7 years without rehab, without gaining any tools or knowing how dangerous, you know, a slip up is or so going to rehab I learned a lot more about uh just what alcoholism is and uh so how long has it been dangers of it and everything so i was in rehab uh in may so it's been almost a year almost a year yeah well congrats yeah and everyone's um everyone's really there for you i hope you feel the support and the love that you're getting because it's very visible. So I hope you feel it. And that gives you, you know, positive vibes and energy. Yeah, I mean, it's been, it's, it's been really, uh, yeah, I mean, it definitely helps. It definitely helps. Um, but, uh, but like I said, it's so much the, the, it's, it's such a, <clears throat> emotional roller coaster right now that there's every every it's a minute by minute thing i mean things come and you get anxiety and you get overwhelmed and then it passes and well do you you have any anything set up in place to protect yourself because like you said you you're almost a year sober but now you're also in the thrust like i said of this media circus and of coming out with your story did you put any boundaries in place for yourself? Something to help, you know, because this is going to be a different, this is going to be a a whole new thing that's happening right now. So how are you kind of going to protect yourself through that? Um, Well, I mean, it's keeping a healthy support system of people around you who uh, build you up when you're doing well, but also aren't afraid to say, Hey man, like, I'm you're getting emotional or, you know, you're, uh, you know, that can just be honest with you, um, in times of struggle, um, going to therapy, um, counseling. I mean, yeah, just trying to keep a, a healthy support system around you of yeah. friends, and family that just want to see you be healthy and do well, you know? Good. Well, we wish you all the luck and all the success. And thank you so much for for talking to me today. Yeah, thank you. It was good to meet you. You too.